Hey, how you doing, man? What's up, guys? It's a special edition. We pulling up midweek before the actual podcast recording date so all of everybody out here y'all get a bonus episode this week but we had to talk about it we had to talk about it so before we get into it first of all what is up i am your boy one third of the partners it's your boy tiz and i am along with it's the other third of the partners the padawan here and i'm along with What's happening, man? It's your boy facing the place. We're ahead of the race. Um, and we had to talk about it, my people. Um, I know y'all all seen it. This um, week. It's two things this weekend that we couldn't let the weekend go past without speaking on it. Um, obviously, I know y'all have seen the Kanye West Drink Champs interview. Um, so we had to give our take on it. And then also... Heart of a Fall drop this weekend. Um, great film out on Netflix right awesome. now. So go check it out if you can. Um, so, yeah. Please, please, please check out both. Um, yeah. So, basically, um, we're going to give our take on some shit. Um, we're going to start off with the Kanye West interview. Um, y'all know if it's hip-hop or if it's film. That's all shit. That, that's kind of two of the main things that drives us. So we got to speak on it. And Kanye West was dropping bombs. Um, this was probably more epic than the Soldier Boy rant, than the <laughs> when Birdman pulled up in uh, 104.5. Like, this is huge. Um, mm-hmm. He said a lot. And first of all, despite the haircut, this was probably the most lucid I've seen Kanye since his diagnosis. So salute to his team or whoever got him right. Cause he was definitely talking clearly. He was, he, he, he was a little, you know, he always rambles, but he was mm. coherent. Yeah. He was making points. It wasn't a, like whether you agreed or disagreed, he was stating things with <laughs> evidence. So let's get into it guys. What did y'all think of the interview? Like how did it hit y'all? Uh, it was a lot. Greatest interview, greatest interview I've ever seen. <laughs> I appreciate the, I'm serious, yo. Greatest interview I've ever seen, especially of Kanye, man. I appreciate the fact that Nori and DJ, uh, well, I don't know his name, EFN, I believe. EFN? Yeah, I, EFN. Question, they, they just let him go on. They they let him have his space and be able to get his thought out in his, in his way, you feel me? Even though his thought continues into another thought, it continues another thought, they allowed him the ability to get that out. Most platforms are gonna cut him off and try to control control the narrative and control the flow of the interview. But they still control the flow of the interview while allowing him to be himself. So I think that mm-hmm. that in itself made, made the interview great. They allowed him to come into his own and show his true personality, actually speak on some things that most people wouldn't ask him about. Most people would take it out of context. So I, I feel like they allowed him to just be who he really is in the interview and actually just ex- express that on their platform in, in their way. So <laughs> I fuck with it. Right on, right on. What did you think, Pat? I think I think Nori was the perfect person for um for Kanye to talk. Cause Nori, he don't have like no propaganda or no like ulterior motive or you know, he's just like, I'm happy to see you. He just he the whole premise of the show is to give flowers to people. So like I knew that would give him a comfortable space so he can feel like he can talk without having to fight back all the time. So being being that it was like a real comfortable space, I was like, then it's the simple fact that you're chilling just as friends, um, talking forth back and forth with each other, like like we're talking right now. And as they say, you know, the more you drink the more honest you get. (laughs) And yeah, man, he said what he, how he really felt or whatever. And like, um, I, I'm a fan of Kanye's music or whatever, not always his views, but a lot of this, I can't say, I can't say I disagree with a lot of stuff in this. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I really enjoyed it. I was like in suspense all the way through. 
<laughs> so he addressed a lot. Um, oh yeah, mm-hmm. a whole lot. I, it's been a while since I've heard uh, a rapper of his caliber, or even close to his caliber, that's went through this much behind the scenes and addressing like public rumors and just giving you their take on it fully. Um, mm-hmm. He did it in an all over the place way, but I kind of coalesced a lot of his major points into some bullets here. So um, I figured we just run through them, give our takes on it uh, and build upon there. Mm-hmm. Um, first thing that stuck out to me that he addressed, man, like he started off the interview talking about this nomad lifestyle and how that was his mm-hmm. life goal is to be to the point where he's so impactful, he doesn't have to use his money um, because basically people are giving him room and board for free and taking care of him the way because he's taking care of them. Um, What do y'all think about this? Um, Is this a tangible, like, is this the new American dream to be a no man? And like, what? I, I Yeah, I got a few different ways I want to go with it, but what did y'all think of that when y'all heard it? I I'm gonna let Pat go first. My take is a little different. I'm gonna, my my take will be a little different on most Kanye shit because of just my personality. So I'm gonna let Pat go first. I think if you have a lifestyle where that will work for you, and you have the money to end the and the prestige and, you know, the status to do it, it could work. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, f- he's, I'll say, the way he look at what well, the way I look at it, um, what he was saying or whatever, it, it's, when he says it, it sounds real, like, arrogant or whatever, but I really feel like it's already people doing this. And more or less, We've seen people do this before, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, as um, maybe like a college buddy or whatever, this, that, and the third in their own different way. Maybe he has the, he has the bag or whatever, the tree. So, you know, whatever, he stays at the spot and he's like paying rent or whatever, and this, that, and the third. Or, but in his case, it's more like, all right, I need a place to stay. Um, this is a hotel. You could tell people, hey, Kanye West is staying at this hotel and it boosts your your money up or whatever. Or right. whatever. If you're like, say, I can't say it's the American dream because it's more, I, I, I would feel like a nomad lifestyle is a passport life, lifestyle where you're you're being Indiana Jones and you're going from place to place or whatever. And I don't know. It, as an artsy type of person, I can see that being a comfortable lifestyle. But if you're a family person <laughs> or whatever, you're going to need a house. <laughs> okay. So that might not work with everybody. Like, um, I, I'm like, yeah, like, yeah. Like I've I've know I read books where they say like a house is more of a liability because of the ways you gotta you gotta keep up with the house and stuff like that, um, and I feel like that's where he's going to it. I, the the book I read that from was like Rich Dad Poor Dad, and I think that's the way he's going about it. Um, not having a house, but buying land, and you know living that nomad lifestyle, but. Like I said, you gotta have you gotta be somewhere up in that percentage tax bracket range to pull that off comfortably, <laughs> pretty much. I'm gonna say uh straight up. I, I think there's two ways I can go with it. Um on one hand, I think what I took from it was he was going like the Burning Man type of route. Like if you know anything about mm-hmm. Burning Man, it's like you don't bring any money there. It's everything is free. It's like, like a, it's, it's kind of yeah, like a barter, barter system. system almost. Yeah, like people will offer you free food. 
But on the same mm-hmm. terms, you got to make sure that you keep the grounds clean. And if you got a service, you might, you know, serve that up to the people for free or look out for somebody else. And it's just like, you know, help each one teach one, each one reach one, whatever. So I can dig it. I think on a practical standpoint, it doesn't work in modern society. Um, there's a way it can work if we could get everybody to be on that burning man wavelength where everybody's like on one accord kumbaya you don't bother me i don't bother you you do you i do me whatever cool it works but as a society that's not where we at so practically i don't know it's wise for him to be saying that this is the ideal lifestyle um and maybe I might have might have to run it back. He might have said it was ideal for him specifically, which I hope he's saying. But mm-hmm. That's my, how only I worry, it, so. my only worry is that some kid is going to hear this. See, this is the thing. A lot of times in these interviews, you got people spewing very high level, complex philosophies, but not having the time to mm-hmm. fully break them down. So a kid hearing that, a teenage kid who's trying to get into music is going to hear that and be like, yeah, let me get rich so I can live sofa to sofa. And be, like, kids pick up on these ideologies because people like Kanye Sam. So I'm a little worried about them talking about him talking about like, yeah, don't get a house. I'm just going to move around because that works for the top 1%. But the average person, if you move around couch to couch, it ain't because you want to. It's because you literally are homeless. Not by choice, but because, like, it Uh it feels weird because he even likened it to uh, these trust fund kids who are now going around there, like, being homeless on purpose and shit. And I don't want, like, it always bothers me when I see people using struggle for style points or struggle for, like, a fad, like, when you got real people out here that's struggling through that and they're not doing it because it's cool or because it's a new lifestyle choice. It's like, this is survival for them. So I always get bothered by shit like that. But if, if we could ever, I would love to see a place like that. It would be great. I would love it where you um, could go anywhere and have a crib because everybody got a crib. That that's how they the trust funds are like kids are like really doing it like it's a trend or fad or something. That's what he I, said. I that's I what always... the, this is all based off the Kanye interview for me. So this is all based off of mm. Kanye's words and what he said. And he would be I, more privy I, to those people than I would. So I wouldn't know, but he's saying I, that I that's just, what they're doing. I I kind of took it as like one of them, you know, those people that just want to live off the grid type. You know, because he nah. even made the song about off the grid. grid but my thing saying? is, like, why are you as a trust fund person doing that instead of take instead of you going to live off the grid because you think it's some new thing mm-hmm. to do? Why not use your influence and resources to take several families off the grid on put them more on the grid, give them more? Yeah. Like if you want a project to do, that's cool. Like do some shit like that. I don't like that type of appropriation or that that type of. Oh, let me. Oh, you guys are struggling. Let me like let me take a hood tour and see you see the Negroes down there. Poverty. No man, I ain't that that shit. It's, it's, it hits a nerve. Oh man, that if it's like that, I'm like nah nah. But if yeah, go ahead, Faith. I see that shit on quite a few different levels. Now, as far as I'm saying, the nomad shit is ideal. Once again, he potentially through the interview drops his number, how much he's worth. So that may be ideal once again for him in that percentage. Um, speaking on the trust fund kids, um, the ones who do the backpacking and the ones who go across seas and live off the grid on purpose or do the backpacking and go from village to village. Some of them do it for cultural reasons because they don't like how they are or their, their background, so they go to different cultures and try to study different cultures and just be abroad. Some of them do it to, have to, to actually try to be helpful and go over there and be like nurses and doctors in other countries and shit like that. 
some of them do it just to be gaudy and ooh and ah and take pictures and not be hip and then. So everybody got their own reasons um, and their own mental states of why they do it. Just like with our culture, we got the same thing going on with why people do their thing. And even like different black people in the area of Montville. So just on that accord with people on that financial level, I can't say they're on the model level either. You feel me like, um, they do their different things for different reasons. As far as him speaking on living couch to couch, being able to go to a famous designer and then provide them, him with it, his underwear for the week, that's cool. All of us don't have that benefit. That benefit. But as far as speaking on the, the ability to lean on each other, when he's speaking on that in that respect, I can personally say, yeah, I've done that. And we can all say, all three of us, because at, at, at one point, we all have put that, that belief in our, and what we do as a crew. You feel me? That same line he speaks on that interview, that JB line, if every one of us, our click is rich, our, we'll be each other crushed. I mean, we hold each other up. So, I mean, as far as that nomad life in that respect, how he goes back to that later on in the interview, I can respect that just on a community view. But as far as holistically, I don't think it would work as far as a, a total community because, like Pat said, if you got a family, that's something totally different. If you're by yourself, that's one thing, and you can live like that. But if you got a family and you move around with your family place to place, there's no stability for your children. So trying to raise a family in the Bible like that is totally different. But when you're moving by yourself, because as he said, his home is when he's talking, he's video, chat, he's video chatting with his daughter. That's when he's home. But most of the time, he's with his, in his house on that bag. So me, I, 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 I don't see it. I see the way he tried to put it in his own yay way, because I try to listen to everything he said in the whole interview. Like I said, I listened to it twice. And he brings, he wraps around to his beginning points later on in the interview. He brings wrap around. So he makes sense. But people say he won't or he doesn't. You got to really pay attention. Like that's why I say I'm mm-hmm. glad they gave him his time to express all his points because he comes back to points later on he made earlier. So when he spit that Jay Z line in the middle of the interview, he was making reference to that nomad life and the, the community that it is because it's good, it's cool that he can go cross seas and because he can, his name can bring you revenue or he knows his person or some person he can go lay on a couch and. He can have room and board. You feel me? He he don't need this, but that that's because of what he's done. The basic person can't do that. I can't go to Joe Blow off the street like you know what? Hey, my name is Face. Can I stay in your castle tonight? I can do this for you. No, and in in this day and age, where people's nervous nervousness or insecurities put up as high, and everybody got boundaries and walls because of the fears that have been put on people, we don't, we don't, we can't do that. Because the average person can't go into the, ne- the, ne- the, average, the next average person and ask for something. We can't do that. But mm. in the society proposing, if we were all on a different level and seen, it was seen in his eyes, I can see it. Even because you got to look at what he's seeing in a Kanye type view. If he's seeing society like, okay, if society was like this, cool, we could live that, we can all live that nomadic life. But society ain't like that. So we can't all do it. Only a few can. And they have to be the few select that's on that higher economic plane that can afford to do it. Because me personally, I can't afford to just give up everything and just go, you know what, I'm going to go, I'm going to go see Tip. Fuck a bill. Like, you feel me like yeah. mm-hmm. I got I got people, I got people to provide for. You feel me like I'm not in a financial status where people I can provide for how I provide for and provide by itself. I'm not there yet. Like he is, he makes revenue on top of revenue, so he can afford to go out the country and do whatever. And, and, and they'll know I'm trying to take care of money I make makes money on top of them. So I mean, Eating I'm not there. Yet. You feel me like, hey, I. The nomad life is is cool for him. It may be cool for some, but it ain't cool for all. Um, it could possibly work in that type of society that he preaches on, but not in ours, not in, in today's society, no. I think the system could work, but ain't nobody mm-hmm. about to be no nomad. Where the hell are my kids going to be? I can't drag my kids. Think- well, they got to go to school at some point. 
exactly. I think certain stuff he was talking about was strictly was was for him and those, you know, throughout the whole interview, he name drops all the time. Just him in that like cycle of peers that he's probably talking to. And that's the reason why he can actually pull this off or whatever. Like when like when I look into going into this Kanye interview, I looked at I went into it like I'm watching a Marvel movie. I'm expecting to go into a world that I never seen before. And I, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna see and hear shit that I just don't normally see in a normal community and normal society, pretty much. So in my head, he's like, the, in my head, I'm thinking when he's describing um, his lifestyle or whatever, I'm like, all right, he knows all these CEOs and business people, or whatever. They have a community um, of, of business owners or whatever, million dollar, billion dollar investors and stuff like that. And he's doing projects for th- for them so he can pull off hey let me get some draws from um, Balenciaga in France because I'm there you want me there anyway you know what I'm saying so I I think it's just that if a like if I somehow become um, a millionaire and get Kanye West famous status or whatever where I can talk to Elon Musk or whatever that would be great for me but you know it's one of those dream i I feel like it's one of those dream ideal hey everybody want to be rich and famous type type shit you know what i'm saying it's like watching those mm -hmm. well i want to live with the other people think which i think out there upon squad what the hell y'all want to be nomads i don't know about it um i definitely like the barter type system i like the Everybody look out for everybody else type of vibe. I'm mm-hmm. definitely down with that. But the bouncing from here to there, maybe I'm just too sedentary. But I, I, I'm good mm-hmm. on the I'm good on the bouncing around. I like to be settled. I, I'll be a uh, uh, whatever they call them. Uh, I, I can't be no hunter gatherer and be mm-hmm. bouncing around from trap from area you know, to area I, setting I, up new tents. I need to be settled. You know, I think I you gotta say, have a certain personality you, for that. You, 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 yeah. like the genera- you feel me? The generation is gonna view that on a different level because when we were young and we were more free, we had the ability, freedom to move around as we wanted to. We had nothing to tie it down. But as you get older and you have more responsibilities, your viewpoint on that whole nomad should change. Because, like I said, we all did the couch shit at one point. We all. We didn't want to, though. Dog. It wasn't like that shit was like, oh, this is great. It was like, this is what we doing for survival. Hey, I ain't got nowhere to go, bro. <laughs> I ain't speaking on, the, ain't speaking on the, the, the need or want. I'm speaking on the, the actual the actual action up. And what well, he's speaking on the actual action up. Because he's not speaking on the need. He's not speaking on the, the need the need to. He's so, saying it's an over. ideal lifestyle. Yeah, and like I said, it's him idea, in this yeah, moment, probably. I'm saying you know. that ain't no ideal lifestyle for me. That's why at what no I point was that I mean. ideal. If I could have had a so stable ass crib and shit was right, I would have chosen that, but okay, so take take this then. The will and drive you have now to to have a permanent. Is it the same will and drive you had at that age, at, at that younger age, 10 and, 10 and 15 years ago, that permanent? Or were you more okay with doing the nomad lifestyle at that point? That's my that's my argument, that it, that changes as you get older, because as you get older, you experience but, life, you have more responsibility. You want that permanence more. That That's more, you have more I get your point. It you just, know. you can't apply that to me because I don't feel that way. Like, I don't feel like I ever wanted well, to be like... Point. Like every I mean, move, like, every move I made was because some shit was fucked up in the last situation I was in. Like I moved around Virginia State campus because my mother moved and I ain't had no crib to move in, I ain't had nowhere to live. So it was move the fuck around. <laughs> like I, I was homeless. Like I, I I moved down to the 757 and my mom's situation got fucked up. And I ain't had nowhere else to go. And you allowed me to stay over there at ODU. Like 
I the shit fell out of your crib and then I moved to another spot. Like it won't like shit was like, oh yippee, I get to like so the first chance I had at stability, I took that shit that I had an apartment and stayed there. Like I I prefer to be settled. It's just shit was fucked up. So I, I can't get with I, Kanye on no ideal lifestyle of me hopping couch to couch ever. Like I, I'm good on that. Like if I got my choice, like I, I like the fact of having a couch in case somebody need one or them having one in case I need one ever, but I would rather not need it. I, I would rather, you know, visits be visits because we want to, not because, oh, I have nowhere else to go. Like, yeah. I think he's going on his own little spiritual journey because he's like, he's calling like a monk lifestyle and stuff like that. So I think it's one of those things where he's like, let me take stuff away and then see what I really need or something. At least that's what he can I do that. feel like he's coming. You know, I worry about it, the kids. Hey, I, I'll leave it there. I worry about them kids. Because while you being a monk, they sitting there without their father for large periods of time, maybe unnecessarily, because you finding yourself. Like, I, I, I don't know that I'm going to get down with that. Like, I believe there are spiritual journeys that you can do to find yourself where you still be very accessible outside of FaceTime to your kids, like, right there. Mm -hmm. But that's my opinion. That's, yeah, I, I think it's just, I don't know if he, the lifestyle that he has and the, the companies and businesses he runs have him running like that anyway. I feel like going from place to place. That's why I feel like if you like if you go in that lifestyle or whatever, or like, you know, you got to go from New York to L.A. to Miami to make business deals and stuff like that. If that fits with that nomad lifestyle. But like I said, I mean, if you in a situation where you're your whole situation is stable in one spot. That's that is in no question logical for you. Period. Nah, nah, so. Yeah. From, again, I'm just speaking for me. Mm -hmm. If it worked for him, I mean, that's that. <coughs> if you got to do it, I guess. But I just can't mm -hmm. imagine a world in which, like, again, the bothering, the looking out for each other vibe, I'm definitely down with. I think that's. I was with them there. It's just the no man part that had me a little throw, like personal. Post the couch. I think that's just personal idea. I guess you know, each one, um, each his own to each his own. Um, the next I guess thing, this is a house with. now, right? <laughs> yes, I guess this is a house now, right? That is a house, and depending on how much you you need, you know, your house can vary in size. You know, he said he started with one this big and then he moved up to this one. And, you know, so I guess, you know, now we got a, the, all of the man bag sensation around the world is due to him because of his houses. So no more joking on oh, your no, man bag. I'm going to call anyway. it your man house. I'll call it your guest house. Thank you. <laughs> the, yeah. Uh, the, yeah. <laughs> garage with his Pat, Pat, the shed. Pat, Pat got his guest house with him. Um, um, and then after the nomad, uh, he went into this epic statement. If he did a versus, he would need to do it against four people. <sighs> Any truth to that to y'all? I would say if anyone can say that statement... It ain't but a few people that can say that statement. And he might be one of those few people. Now, mind you, think of this, the, the parameters of versus. Versus is not like, is not like battle rap. You know what I'm saying? It's hit for hit, hit for hit, hit for hit. He has a lot of hits. And it's not genre. hit for hit. It's song for song, which song means song. you can that have a B cut or a, a, a fan hit that may not be a real hit that can beat the shit out that of it. That is true. Depending on where it's placed in it's the line. Jada so, kiss. Right. 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 That's a Jada kiss. Yeah, absolutely. But he might have a Jada kiss. 
not exactly like Jada Kiss because Jada Kiss was rooted and um straight hip hop shit, but he, I mean, he's a producer. You know what I'm saying? So like it wouldn't be a rap versus or whatever unless you bring up a rapper or whatever. So it would be mostly a producer. It'd be more it's like when Teddy Riley and Babyface went with each other, went against each other, you know what I'm saying, pause. But so, like, you you could really think about, like, he's R&B, I'm pretty sure, like, hip-hop, pop music, all kinds of pop music, matter of fact. Like, he, he might be right about that, man. <laughs> he might he might be right. I got a person that could I don't, go that could go with him on all of the places you just named. Yeah. Missy Elliott. Oh, and um uh congratulations to Missy Elliott for getting her um was it a Hall of Fame? She got it, she's about to get a um Hollywood Hall of um Hollywood Star Hall of Fame thing. She deserves it. She called. deserves it. Yep. But I think so, she could do it. Like she can go R and B, she can go songwriting, she can go production, she can go uh, rap, she can go singing, she can go a lot of places that he can go, she can go, and his her catalog is pretty fucking extensive. Yo, did she, he? You peeped the part where he said, um, "Missy, what's that?" Hell? I think he said, he said "Missy is." He was talking about Missy people inspired was something. Around. Yeah, yeah, but he said Missy was so involved in something. Um, I'm gonna look that up, man, because I because you bringing that up popped that in my head. But you're right, you're right, Missy Elliott, Missy Elliott, Missy Elliott is right. But um, but like I said, it's only a few people that can do it, and definitely Missy Elliott is one of them. And what about Drake? Because he then went into Drake. He said a lot about Drake um, throughout the interview. As he, um, which is to be expected. Definitely a lot came to fruition. Like he did not, uh, like Kim did not have sex with Drake, but mm -hmm. he acted like, Drake acted like he did. So that was a problem. Mm -hmm. He DM'd all of the women in Kanye's circle. <laughs> that sounds like something he would do. Okay. <laughs> like, I'm just going to DM literally every woman around you <laughs> and shoot the shot. Um, he's petty, man. He, he's, he moved he's, he's five blocks wolf. down the street just to just to be close to him, just to, just to be petty. Um, I don't know. That one I don't know about, man, because, you know, Calabasas is a nice place, and a lot of famous people move to Calabasas, so... <laughs> I, that, on his side, he could be right. And on that side, it could be Calabasas is the nice like place for rich people to live. This is the problem uh, I had. Oh, oh, go ahead. What'd you say, Faith? I like the move Drake made just on the Petty King level. He's the king of Petty, and I, I, I like the Petty King mode. He is very yeah. petty. petty. It's strategic. If you're going to be Petty, you got to go all the way. You can't go half back. Oh, he's high on the Petty. Way. He's high on the Petty. <laughs> He went mm -hmm. all the fuck mm -hmm. with that one. Well, I'm going to contact every female you know. He is petty pendergrass, boy. He is super petty. <laughs> yes, sir. That's a good I one. Like yes, I like sir. Woo, boy. Woo, boy. He is yeah. the OG of petty, boy. Okay. Um, but, um, one, one point that uh, Kanye had brought up or whatever that kind of hit a light bulb on a, a lot of things on why he, like, reacted a certain way or whatever but when he said he had to go to uh, a kid's party a birth kid's birthday party and they played that song where you know that that Travis Scott song yeah or whatever, yeah I can see that like, I can see that being a problem though like you're, you're singing about <laughs> killing me and uh, my baby sitting there opening her gift no nah. and not only that is no nah. is Drake so they're playing that everywhere yeah, they, yeah, they're they, gonna play they, it everywhere. They're playing that everywhere. Yeah, so um, like, it's not like it's like some local dude that's not gonna 
that you you know you're gonna hear once and you ain't gonna never hear again, man. My problem oh, with this whole take that Kanye had on Drake and y'all uh, music buffs can feel free to let me know on the real timeline where this happened, but I did not hear a real problem between him and Drake specifically until the baby shit. I feel like when the pusher shit happened and the baby shit started to leak and all of that wild shit, <clears throat> that's what shifted everything. So for Kanye to then be coming out like a victim is a little bit disingenuous at best. Like, yeah, come on, bro. You, you had some petty moments too, like. And I ain't even talking yeah, about the, the address shit. You know, I, I ain't mad at that. The address is Googleable. I, I get what he was saying there. Anybody could have found it, whatever. But, uh, <laughs> sir, you put the man baby out there. People in that nigga family probably didn't know about that baby. That yet. is true. Like, that's some, whoo, some high levels of pedigree. So for you to okay. then act like, oh, you know, me giving back was just yeah, like, you know, it was like after Holyfield had been, you know, doing it to Tyson over and over again. He just bit the ear, you know? No, yay. Come on, bro. Come on, yay. Come on, yay. Come on. <clears throat> really? We gonna do that? That is true. I, I, that 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 bothered me a little bit, but uh, yeah. That is true. Now, I, I, you can't we got to put this point out there. We don't know whatever happened behind the scenes and stuff like that. This is true. I have not heard nothing from behind the scenes that starts before. Yeah. The so, baby. And the, when the baby came it, out, it, 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 it changed the game. Kind of like the rap of the baby. You know, they went, when the uh -huh. baby came out, it, been, it ain't been the same since. You know, like they probably had the OGs like Jay Prince and and them probably trying to calm shit down behind the scenes or whatever. And then did you hear Brother Ye uh dr name dropping Jay Prince several times though to make sure we, just to make sure on the petty tip Drake know yeah I've been hanging with your boss bitch <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah boy I tell you the, the yeah. boss the boss talk petty be funny. Um, but he, it, he, he also at like they were they have like calmed things down since then or whatever in the conversation like they're like now they're like working on projects through J Prince but I don't know that is it 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 seemed like I don't know right now it just seemed like it's like all WWE right now we don't got to a point where we don't make music about it we don't drop albums. We might as well keep this going and make some profit out of it, and then we're gonna piece it up. So yeah. that's how I feel. I I hope they get it settled, but this definitely uh, came across as I'm trying to scapegoat and make it look like I'm the victim here, mm -hmm. without taking any accountability for his shit. And I think that was my biggest issue with it. Like, I like that he gave me some behind the scenes on some of Drake's petty, you know. That was that was cool tea to drop, I guess, but come on, bro. You gay the main baby up. Jesus Christ. That, that don't get no more petty than that. Um he gave us a lot, man. But I don't think we're gonna did. get accountability until another interview. Oh no, we until another it. interview, I don't think we're gonna get another <laughs> We got, did not no, get it. I already man. gave you so much. Why would I give you accountability, man? You got to wait for the next interview for that one. We say um, that. That's in the tuck. Yes, that is in the tuck. Um, some of the other bombshells he chose to drop. Plan B created for population control by Margaret Sanger and the KKK. Now, I don't know about the KKK part, but I've heard that before. I have heard that before. He started dropping that some jewels right up already. in this part. This, this was around the, the yeah. hour-ish mark, and he started to talk then. I was like, okay, yeah, now you, 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 you're making some sense. I don't know that you got the exact culprits right, but the general gist. Oh, yeah. Yes, indeed. Possible. Possible. Mm -hmm. Um. Beef I, with Big Shot? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. 
I was going to say one thing about this is that uh, I don't want people to just be there willy-nilly making kids out the blue or whatever. Now is the, the history behind Plan B is to is popular troll. But just don't be going there all really name. That's that's starting an, that's another problem. <laughs> that's another one that we're also trying to calm down in time. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Indeed. Family. You built the family first. Yes. Indeed. Yes. Um Next thing was he has beef with Big Sean and John Legend for not supporting his campaign. Uh, <laughs> I did not know that he had beef with John Legend at all, but the Big Sean one, I, I didn't know but that they had shit. an issue. I thought they was cool. I don't think did y'all know about this? I, I felt like um, it was building up. Um, what evidence did you have? Of, like, what, did, yeah. what had you seen? Um, Big Sean, well, Big Sean just dropped the EP or whatever, and he was bringing up how things won't as cool as it used to be with good music in that, and like, uh, what is it called? What's a Life or whatever. Okay. That dropped like about two weeks ago, matter of fact, okay. um, right after the... You know, when Wale dropped, it was the week right after it. He dropped the song, What a Life, at the same time Wale dropped um, his Florin, um, I can never say that, Florin 2, I cannot say that name. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, and then the next, in the next um, EP, well, the next week, he dropped that EP, and I listened to it or whatever. He, um, it was with Hit Boy. The whole thing's with Hit Boy. And this is like his first um, project with good music not involved. And Hit, Bo Hit Boy is totally producing. So okay. Okay. It, it was dropping a little bit of gems and stuff like that. But at the same time, I seen Big Shine with them saying, hey, we were just chilling. You know what I'm saying? So right on. Mm -hmm. Um, the next few bombshells um definitely took me by surprise. And then I try to like give them. Sorry. So the next few bombshells. Um, the first one, this one hurt me to my heart. Dame is a better CEO over Jay Z because Dame is the visionary. <laughs> mm, <sighs> nah. I can see why he felt that way. Because mm -hmm. I can see with the way with his personality, you know, how arrogant he could be, um, how he, how pushy he is about his own visions and stuff mm -hmm. like that or whatever. I mean, he said it himself, he's a combination of both, pretty much. So, I I can see why he feels that way, or whatever. And yeah, you trip. Face, you agree with him? I mean, I don't personally agree, but I haven't been in the circle that Kanye has been to have the experience to make that opinionated statement that he has. He has been with. Dame has been in charge, and he's been when Jay-Z has been in charge. So he's seen the fruition in both and the growth in both, and he may have seen the potential in Dame at a certain level where the potential in Jay continued to go, and Jay got, Dame got stifled because of business connections. Um, like Pat said, if you look at their style at a certain point when it comes to business, he does mimic the Dame style as far as the arrogantness, and excuse me, that's not even the word, but the, the level of being arrogant he puts into his business tactics, the, um, the, uh, how narcissistic he can be sometimes in dealing with business. I can see a little bit that, that old dame in him. But as far as mm -hmm. what I see, as far as what I believe a CEO should be, 
I believe Jay does a way better job. But once again, this is a that's an opinionated statement. And I feel like most of the interviews, he he drops some facts, but he makes his facts in with his opinions as well. So it gets muddy then. But as far as him saying he believes that that comes from a different a different viewpoint where I personally will never have that that information in me to say you feel me like on his level. But as far as they say it, I would always say Jay Z will be better than Dave because I see where Jay Z was at in the result with that and where he where he ended up now and the business connection he has now. And I see where Dane is now, you feel me? And the results of how he did business then and where he is the same amount of time Jay is from there from their separation. Um, so that's just me from what I see on the outside. But from the inside, it's always gonna be something different. So I believe like he was speaking from an inside of the viewpoint. So Chief Executive mm-hmm. Officer is the highest ranking person in a company. While every company differs, CEOs are often responsible for expanding the company, driving profitability, and in the case of public companies, improving share prices. CEOs manage the overall operations of a company. I think where Kanye is slipping is he's looking at visionary. Visionary, that might be the CEO or the artistic director or the whatever else. But that ain't necessarily like the CEO's job is the business piece. Like, how are we going from A to B and taking what we made last year and increasing that amount next year? Like, that's really what we're doing. Like, how are we growing this business? Like, you come up with all the artsy fartsy shit you want to that don't work, that, that lose money. But that ain't being a great CEO. That's being an artist. And I think that's what Kanye kind of gravitates toward Dame at because they both artists. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> that ain't a CEO. Like the shit that <clears throat> led to Kanye being worth what he worth comes from doing shit like Jigga. Like managing that boardroom right, making sure you sign the right deals, making sure your contracts are in the best interest of your of your company, making sure you maintain ownership as much as possible. Like these are the things that were not necessarily on Dane's radar, he trying to make sure the artists look good and they got certain placements. And that's the that's the thought of an artist. That's the thought of like aesthetics. How does this put together to make things look good, which can be contributing to a business. But like, if the contract ain't right, now that beautiful idea you had don't make no money and the, and the, the business go belly up. So it's like, at some point you gotta yeah. have somebody. So I. It was another frustrating moment for me uh, from Kanye just because I know he knows business. So the fact he said that, I feel like. It didn't surprise me, though. No, it didn't. I know that I know that him and Dame are close, but uh, it just bothered me. I think that was more of a personal Mm -hmm. bother just because you know how I feel about Mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. But he said he wouldn't battle him, though, because he's the boss. Oh yeah, he know, he know better. He know and Biggs better. was there too, so he pull out that <laughs> he pull out that ninth wonder and that Just Blaze catalog. We got a battle. We got a mm-hmm. battle. Um, he said that Just Blaze is a copycat, and I want to make sure that I don't say nothing wrong or mess up what he said. I want to make sure I get it exactly right. So, um, yeah, I'm going to make sure I actually play that right fast. Just Blaze. Well, Swiss Beats definitely because Just Blaze is a copycat. You know, he get credit for the blueprint, and I did the first half of the blueprint, and he just copied my half and got, I mean, look, look where I'm at today, look where he at today. So that's that should just show you. No, what do you mean? I'll be here my and then it'd be all over the radio. I have my girl from Chicago be a hot 97 and stuff, listen to the radio. It'd be another just play song, another just play song. <laughs> so um is he right about that? 
especially on the blueprint. Did Just Blaze steal Kanye style? I don't think so. I see it more as how Jada explained it. They had a project yeah. to do, and the project had an assignment. So you had a certain amount of material to pull from the assignment. So at a certain the end of the day, the sound would be somewhat the same because it was a project. But how they put the sound together was different. So I would say, okay, he copied the sound. No, that was the project. You would just say the first half of the sound totally different than the second half. And people like, what the hell are they trying to do? No, it was a collective project yeah. where three individuals came together to make one sound. So they had, okay, this is the sound we're going for. I got this part. You had this part. Now you were replaced with this person. So this person has your partner. We're going for this mm-hmm. sound. Bring your element and this sound together with me to let's make this sound. Right. right. So I, I, I don't agree with him. He said he copied me. He used the same. He he used the same soul samples. He's a he used the soul. So that would that's what Jada wanted. That's what Jay wanted. So what you're expecting is like I'm gonna go total opposite. And we're not going to use it, so we're going to use this era of music. No, that's not how I want my shit to sound. I want my shit to sound like this. Okay, we're going to do this thing. I mean, you, you, you can't compare one person's attributes. Like, that's one thing I don't agree with, with what Kanye often does, to try to compare himself to other people and his accomplishments. Maybe people don't want to do that. It's like the level of stress you have in your life comes from a lot of shit you do and the circuits you put yourself in. So you having nine billion dollars, you have nine billion dollars of stress. Well just ladies don't have that much stress, that much stress. He's perfectly happy with that much stress he has. So like he could possibly aspire to be where you at and possibly could get to where you at if he put himself in those lanes to do that. But right. sometimes people don't want don't sometimes people don't want that. I mean happiness it, happiness is not always achieved by trying to have the most money you could possibly have in the world. Because a lot of people know more, with more money comes more problems. I can guarantee if Kanye was still Kanye, but behind the scenes and no one saw your face, you said not being done. You you not putting yourself in some of these circles, being a limelight. Your your stress wouldn't be there. Just lays behind the scenes like a motherfucker. You feel me? Who knows yeah. how many how much money he has? Just because he doesn't advertise himself and put himself out like that, like. That's one thing I really don't get down with. Kanye doing it, nobody doing that. Compare yourself to other people to try to put yourself on a high pedestal. That's just lame to me. Like, that's just that's really played out lame. That's some old boo boo bullshit. Um, <laughs> excuse me, language. But, like, I don't say copy. Like Jay said, that's unfair to say that because, once again, it was a, it was a project we had an assignment to do. Assignment. Which you going to fail at your assignment? No, you going to come. Complete your assignment and get paid. No, much you did. So, I mean, as far as that statement, copying, hell no. Don't don't see it, Kanye. But of course, you're you're going to say that because you're the, the artist formerly known as Kanye. So, I mean, formerly known as Kanye. You can have your own opinion. As, he changed. He changed his name as an artist. Yeah, he changed his name. Um, it, it's yay. Um, it's yay. Yeah, it's just yay. Yeah, the artist for me now. Um, but if you're an artist like like any artist in time, like it's a lot of artists, painters, like this person copied my style. No, motherfucker, it ain't copy your style. You just see some of what you did. You have the same thought process as this person. And, uh, 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 wow, you're not that unique. Every person is unique to a certain point. We all have some similarities. So especially when in thought process. So sorry, Kanye. Um, you thought just lazy and copy you were. He's not a copycat of you. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna say it wasn't. He's not a copycat. Um, I listened back to the blueprint just to kind of like double check for this. They both use soul samples, but they use them in very different ways. I feel like Kanye more chopped them up and changed the tempo and or reverb on them, whereas Just Blaze was more clipping just parts of the actual original sample and letting that play. 
Um, mm -hmm. Like, at the most, he might have did a speed up on it, but the way they would, like, for Just Blaze, the sample itself was almost a beat as opposed to Kanye, who used the sample to enhance the beat, <clears throat> which I feel yeah. like is two very different uh, production approaches. So I, I feel like it was a cheap shot. Um, and just to kind of close out with Kanye, um, I feel like a lot of it was cheap shots. I feel like the fact that he was like, you know, if your verses was left off of Donda, it pretty much means your shit won't shit. That, that was, was so kind of low. Like, I mean, yeah. Was the best verse Soldier Boy ever spent in his life. Yeah, damn it. Soldier Boy was rapping his little heart out. He I did. His hear little, that. You know, crushed I, I his did little dream. <laughs> and then, uh, I feel like he was talking about some publicist that he was saying is actually the reason that his wife and kids are becoming scared of him. And I feel like they, they cut the name out. I feel like it was Chris Jenner, but I have no way of proving that because they cut it out um, on the YouTube version I saw. But uh, mm -hmm. I'd like to hear more about that if that is the case, though, because I've always had a theory that Chris Jenner is kind of the reason for a lot of the drama that stirred up in that family. So uh, I'd love to hear more about that and see get get a peek into that. But uh, yeah, 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 yeah. If it's not Chris Jenner, it's probably somebody that was hired by Chris Jenner. It was some that's publicist, I but I don't know if Chris Jenner if that's mm -hmm. her role for Kim and them. Or I, I don't really know what mm -hmm. the what the business structure is for that family. But yeah, I want to hear more about that story. Um, I feel like that was a little petty for him to drop that and not give the full details. Um. Probably yeah. couldn't legally. Yeah. And, and uh, I feel like the theme of his total interview with them was just, you know, the bigger you are, the harder you fail. And that shit, like, yeah, he was gunning for everybody. It was pew, 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 feedback from it, positive and negative. A lot of people have something to say. Everybody he named dropped, he saw people he had opinions on. You're gonna have something to say about it, you know? especially people like Talib. But well, Talib, you're gonna have something to say. I know. Woo! Oh, now that was fun. I know he's gonna have something to say. <laughs> Common's gonna have something to say. Yo, just because he got a whole podcast, and we, he has and, to. Have and something. and we're gonna he talk. Probably already said we, so. We're gonna talk about them coming up on the year episode of uh, the podcast too. So y'all listen out for that. When we start talking about the top MCs before 2000s. We might be able to settle that beef. But damn, he was gunning. Um, so yeah, man, that was the Kanye drink champs interview. And like I said, man, the bigger